Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to 32 Manias with Mike. Ooh, all right. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. When I when I saw the um the little promo still for WrestleMania 27, that's the one we're talking about right now. I remembered it was one the Rock that hosted. I immediately got very concerned that this was not going to be a good show because I remember not enjoying that one that much. Um, but you know. This is why I'm watching these again, to get better perspective on these WrestleManias. Uh, but before we jump into the card, let's talk about the pre-show, as I like to do. Um, there was a Lumberjack match for the U.S. Championship with Sheamus going against Daniel Bryan. I wonder if we'll see those two ever again in a WrestleMania match. Uh, <laughs> but um, the match went to a no contest because all of the Lumberjacks started to interfere, so... Guess what we get? Another battle royal, as you would expect. Um, and I'm going to run down who else was in that battle royal, because why not? It's it's always fun to hear these guys, I think. Okay. Well, first of all, you have to know that the great Kali won this battle royal, so Riz is going to be very thrilled. Uh, the other participants, besides Sheamus and Daniel Bryan, obviously, Tyler Rex, Kurt Hawkins, Yoshitatsu, R-Truth, Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso, Mark Henry, Primo, Zack Ryder, Chava Guerrero, D.H. Smith, JTG, Trent Beretta, Tyson Kidd, Johnny Curtis. Don't remember who that is. Chris Masters, Evan Bourne, William Regal, Ted DiBiase Jr., and Drew McIntyre. Wow, I think maybe five of the five or six of those guys are still employed. <laughs> Uh, I, I love looking at Battle Royale participants. It's so much fun. All right, so let's move in um, to the card proper. But before, this WrestleMania has a weird intro, and I think they could have cut this whole thing out and given a little bit more time to some of the other matches. We have basically what sounds like the Saturday Night Live announcer saying, Live from Atlanta, it's WrestleMania 27. And here's your host, the Jabroni beating, pie eating. Like, they do the whole intro for The Rock. And then Rock comes out, and Rock talks for 15 minutes. Now, great for the Atlanta people. Great for the people in the stadium. It doesn't really help a whole lot on the, uh, on the main show. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything for us because we're not seeing The Rock live. We're, we're just watching The Rock the same way we wa we'd watch Rock on Raw. But it, ba Rock basically foreshadows the ending because he's still obsessed with John Cena. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah. And then Rock leaves, and then we get an actual WrestleMania intro talking about the matches that we have tonight. And uh, then we get our first match. For the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, this is going to be something that I think they do a few more times too. Where they start off WrestleMania with a world title match. Because there's no more money in the bank. No more money in the bank on WrestleMania. Uh, which is unfortunate. But it's kind of better that money in the bank has its own pay-per-view now. But uh, So let's go. It's, uh, it's Edge. In what would be his retirement match. Uh, coming out to the ring with Christian, going up against Alberto Del Rio with Ricardo Rodriguez and Brodus Clay. And I'm not going to lie, even though I remember this match being decent, I'm still very scared because Michael Cole is a heel on commentary. He's in his coal mine. And um, the other commentator with Jerry Lawler is Josh Matthews. This first this first match feels really TNA to me, and it's frightening. I was extremely scared. I was looking. I'm like, oh no, there's four hours of Josh Matthews and heel Michael Cole on commentary. I got chills, you guys. I was a little I was a little nervous because any of you who have uh, 
um, watch my midweek war episodes of Impact, you can tell I don't exactly like Josh Matthews. But um, this is kind of, I think, where Josh Matthews picked up his new shtick. He learned it by watching you, Cole. He learned it by watching you. But fear not. Josh Matthews is actually great. Yeah, I, I said it. Josh Matthews is actually really, really good on commentary with uh, King. Cole is horrible uh, because he's being the heel, but when he's not being a heel, he's actually pretty good too. So the commentary wasn't as bad as I feared, and coming a little bit later, we'll have a change in the commentary team, which is welcome. Um, but Edge and Del Rio, they have a good match here. They, they have a fun match. Uh, it's it's very bittersweet that this is Edge's last WrestleMania match, but it is kind of cool that his last Mania match, he gets to defend the title successfully. He beats Del Rio with a spear. And uh, yeah, then Edge and Christian actually destroyed Del Rio's car that he drove out. A nice, really nice looking Rolls Royce. One One weird thing about this WrestleMania, two title matches. Two. Dos. That's it. It's really weird. I don't think we've ever had WrestleMania that's had less than three title matches. Even WrestleMania 1 had, I want to say, three title matches in it. And that's only because Hulk Hogan was in a tag match for the main event. But yeah, this only has two title matches and it feels really weird. But except for one glaring exception... I really enjoyed this mania. It's it's shocking, I, and you know the manias with where every match is given time; those tend to be the ones that I enjoy a lot more. One of these matches is given way too much time, but we'll get to that. Um, the next match. Oh, I forgot about this match. I did, but I remember uh, in the build to this WrestleMania, I was very excited for this match. The first time I saw his WrestleMania, I loved it. Now I love it even more. Cody Rhodes, disfigured Cody Rhodes, going up against Rey Mysterio dressed as Captain America. This match is amazing. This match is far and away the best match on the card. Sorry, Triple H. Sorry, Undertaker. I'm still saying that's accurate. Still saying it. Um, wow, is this good. Basically, the storyline here is um, Cody and Ray had a match on SmackDown, and Cody had exposed Ray's knee brace. The knee brace catches Cody in the face during the 619, which destroys dashing Cody Rhodes, and we get disfigured Cody Rhodes, where he's wearing a face mask like, like uh, Richard Jefferson in the NBA. And so Cody is upset naturally as you would be and he's and he um continues feuding with ray and uses the mask as a headbutt like um he uses it as a foreign object basically but oh my god this the storytelling in this match is ridiculous like first of all cody rhodes is coming out he's hiding his face he's like you're the fam of the opera or whatever like euphemism you want to say he's hiding his face he's got a mask on it's fantastic Rey Mysterio comes out as Captain America. Really, really good-looking outfit. Awesome. Very, very cool. He's even got the little lucha symbol in the center. Really, really cool stuff. But this match, Cody exposes the knee brace again um, and actually pulls the knee brace off of Rey Mysterio. So Mysterio, in kind, pulls the face mask off of Cody. Mysterio puts on the Cody's face mask and uses it to headbutt Cody Rhodes. And gets a near fall out of it. And then Cody reaches down, grabs the knee brace, and clocks Ray when he's going for a 619. It's really, really good stuff. This is a fantastic match. It's it's only it's a little over 10 minutes, but seek this match out. It's definitely worth your time. Uh, especially if you're a big fan of the kind of stuff Cody Rhodes is doing now on the Indies and TNA. Really, really good. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed this match. Um, I might watch it again after I do this video. It's so good. Now we get a match that probably could have used a little bit more time. It's an eight-man tag team match. The core, two R's, if you remember that group, 
it was the offshoot of the Nexus on SmackDown. It's Wade Barrett, Big Zeke, rest in peace. Uh, rest in peace, Big Rick. Heath Slater and Justin Gabriel, or as we now know him, PJ Black. And they're going up against Big Show, Kane, Santino, and Kofi Kingston. Um, it's super quick. It's super quick match. It's not even two minutes. It's more of a palate cleanser than anything else. And um, the Kane, Big Show, Santino, and Kofi win with a Cobra into a knockout punch from Big Show. And he Slater jobs at WrestleMania. Shocker. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's here. It's fun. It's a nice reminder that the core existed. It's kind of funny. Then, like, <coughs> excuse me, groups like um, Evolution, NWO, the Nexus, like, we talk about them in such high regard. They don't get many WrestleMania appearances. Like, the Nexus never even made it to a WrestleMania. They had already disbanded by then. So it's really kind of funny to see, you know, what a difference a year can make. Like, because they talked about Edge being a nine-time champion. He'd only been champion once before this at WrestleMania, which is, I think, really funny. Um, but yeah, go figure. It, ju it just shows you what like how much can happen in a year. Uh, the next match is also an offshoot of a Nexus match. The leader of the new Nexus, CM Punk, is going up against Randy Orton. And uh, that's because years back, Randy Orton punk kicked CM Punk in the head and caused him to forfeit his WWE Championship, or the World Championship, I think, at the time. And that's where this whole feud started. Like, CM Punk cost Randy Orton the title... And basically, this this whittled down to Randy Orton won a whole bunch of matches on Raw to make sure that the new Nexus didn't appear at ringside in this match so he could have CM Punk one-on-one. -on -one. And they have a really good match. Uh, it's really, really fun. You got CM Punk working on the leg so Orton can't use the punt. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's it's good stuff. It's, it's CM Punk. You're going to have a good match at WrestleMania with him. And... Um, and but of course, this ends the way a lot of Randy Orton's WrestleMania matches will end from now on is a really weird way to get into the RKO. And this time, the weird way is a springboard into an RKO. What CM Punk was going for with the springboard, I'm not sure, but yeah, that's how it ended. Uh, Orton got this, Orton got the RKO, and that's it. That's all she wrote. Good match up, but this next match, oh. This next match is rough. Um, this probably takes up takes up about twenty five minutes of the show, give or take. The match is a little under fourteen minutes. It's Michael Cole versus Jerry Lawler, and Michael Cole has Jack Swagger in his corner. Stone Cold is the is the guest referee. Um, Jim Ross and Booker T come out to help Josh Matthews with commentary. This match is a train wreck, you guys. Uh, there, there are there are a couple fun parts to it, like um, Jerry Lawler pulling Michael Cole like, up against his little coal mine. That's fine. Um, Michael Cole pretending to be Jerry Lawler, putting a strap down. That's fine. But this match did not need to be this long at all. Um, this is... Oh. It, it's, it's a little rough, and especially given the finish the finish is is the worst thing like jerry lawler puts you know he he puts michael cole in the ankle lock basically and austin um you know austin can't hear michael cole tapping out you know it's, it's kind of funny and jerry lawler wins or does he because no he doesn't um michael cole had shoved austin at one point so austin shoved Michael Cole back as Earl Hebner has done a thousand times in ev in every Earl Hebner match you can think of with Triple H. Everyone you can think of with Triple H, Earl Hebner's done the same thing. Um, but as Jerry Lawler and Stone Cold are celebrating, we get an email from the anonymous Raw general manager. If you don't remember what this is, it's the time Raw was actually run by a laptop. Yeah. Uh, that laptop turned out to be controlled by Hornswoggle, which makes no sense, given most of these segments. But um, this is when they should have revealed that it was Michael Cole being the anonymous GM. That it was Cole the whole time. 
this is when they should have revealed it because the anonymous Raw GM says uh, that because Austin put his hands on Michael Cole, Jerry Lawler's disqualified and Michael Cole wins the match. And it just, it kind of, it, it deflated the crowd because we're all having a good time. Booker T was drinking beers. Uh, Austin, is, Austin stunned Booker T. Everyone was having a good time. And then Michael Cole wins the match for no reason. There was no reason to do this. It's not like we have to keep Michael Cole strong or anything like that. Like, there's just absolutely no point to it. But yeah, then Austin, you know, stuns Booker T. He stuns Josh Matthews for, for reading that email, which is kind of funny. And for the rest of the show, we get JR and King on commentary. But um, before we get into the last three matches, let's talk about the Hall of Fame. It's a small class this year. It's a small class this year, but honestly, it's, uh, it's pretty great. It's, it's really, really good. Um, so let's see. Hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so the headliner main event, the icon, Shawn Michaels. Of course. Come on. It's, of course it's Shawn Michaels. He just retired last year. Shawn Michaels gave an awesome speech at the Hall of Fame. It was really good. Um, he inducted by Triple H, naturally, as you would imagine. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan was inducted uh, by Ted DiBiase. Hacksaw actually gave a pretty good speech from what I remember. We had uh, Bull, Bob, Bull Bob Armstrong, once a participant in a steel cage arm wrestling match, and he was inducted by his kids. Uh, we had Sonny getting inducted. I think she was inducted by like a group of WWE Divas, a group of them. And Sonny had a really good speech, despite what's happened to Sonny since then. But yeah, that was, that was good. Uh, Abdullah the Butcher, inducted by Terry Funk. As you would expect, Abdullah, not exactly the most prolific, prolific speaker in the world, but I still remember him giving a good speech. And uh, the Road Warriors were inducted, too. Road Warriors were inducted in 2011. Uh, they were inducted by Dusty Rhodes. Uh, really, really good. I, I remember their speech was fantastic. And, uh, of course, Drew Carey. Yeah, Drew Carey was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. He was inducted by Kane, you know, the man who eliminated him from the Royal Rumble. Go figure. I don't know. Uh, Drew Carey, we're going to get better celebrity inductees in, in the upcoming years. I promise you that. Um, but, yeah, so uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good time. But let's get back to the card because this match, uh, I think people put – it's the Undertaker versus Triple H. Guess who wins? Uh, I don't. I don't know why this match needed to exist. It's a good match. It's a good match. They destroy the coal mine, which I think is really funny. Um, there's a lot of like, like it's no holds barred. So naturally, you know, there's weapon shots or steel chairs or sledgehammer stuff, all all things like that. But um. It ends when it looks like Triple H is about to... See, the, here's the thing about a lot of these ladder taker matches, with a couple exceptions. There's always that point where the person fighting the Undertaker hesitates. And, like, why? Like, you're, you're in a match. I understand, like, the reverence of the streak, but it doesn't seem realistic to me, especially when it usually costs them the match. Like, that's usually the downfall. I mean, it, the one time it worked really well, it wasn't a taker match. It was the Ric Flair Shawn Michaels match, where Shawn didn't want to do a super kick the first time, and Ric Flair caught him with a roll up. That was a good way to do that because it's not just ending someone's streak, it's ending Ric Flair's career. That's, that's a complete. I'm sorry. Ric Flair's career, greater than the streak. Sorry, my personal opinion. I'm sure a lot of you agree. I'm sure a lot of you are pissed off that I said that. It's fine. But especially when the whole angle is you want to end the streak. Like, Sean's angle was never that he wanted to end Ric Flair's career. Ric Flair wanted the match with Shawn Michaels. You know, uh, I never liked the, the whole, like, hesitation thing. Uh, but 
Triple H is about to use a sledgehammer, and then Taker catches him in the Hell's Gate. And it's actually kind of cool because Triple H is still holding the sledgehammer, and he eventually like, like it slips from his hands, and he passes out. And Taker wins, as you would expect Taker to do, obviously. But uh, yeah, it's a really good match. It's it's long. It's a long match, y'all. It's a half hour. It's a half hour, and that doesn't even count entrances. That's bell to bell. But yeah, uh. Because I'm sure Triple H out. I don't know who any of those, the Centurions were in Triple H's entrance. I'm sure we know a lot of them now. Because I bet they're all NXT guys. But uh, yeah. So I don't know. It, it, the the Michaels matches were better. I think next year's is a better match. Because I know it's Hell in a Cell. With Sean as the referee. So I know I know that one's a little bit more improved. But I don't remember exactly how much I liked it. But. We'll see when I get to that one. Uh, the next match, nice fun palate cleanser. It's a mixed tag team match. John Morrison, Trish Stress, and Snooky against Dolph Ziggler and Lay Cool. Uh, it's cool. We, we we it's basically John Morrison versus Ziggler for a little bit. Trish Stress versus Michelle McCool for a little bit, and then Snooky comes in. She does her little gymnastics routine, and she gets the win. And Snooky, to her credit, you know, she got in. She did her two spots, which were fine. They nothing wrong with it. She didn't try to chain wrestle or anything like that, and it, it worked out pretty well for everyone. I, I think Snooki got booed a lot when she entered, but the first thing she does is a uh, handspring back elbow, which looked great. I mean, she was a, she was a cheerleader in high school, so of course she can do stuff like that, and it looked fine. It was absolutely good, uh, and it was short. It was short. It was under five minutes. So I think I think this is actually done really well, despite a lot of people probably saying that it's a horrible idea. But I thought I thought it was fine. Oh, now we get to the main event. The Miz, the WWE champion, defending against John Cena. Guys, um, I don't want to overstate this. The Miz had the best entrance video package in WrestleMania history. Yes. I yes. Still to this day. Um the only thing I think that's come close to it is Rusev coming in on a tank. My opinion. And Shawn Michaels zip lining because that was just ridiculous and would never happen now. Um but Miz has a has an entrance video package set to Nas's Hate Me Now. And it goes throughout Miz's entire career, like being on the real world, being on Tough Enough, being host of SmackDown, like going all through everything. And it's just showing like all the, the huge superstars. And then when it, when it finally gets to hate me now, it shows Miz being successful and winning championships and winning money in the bank and winning the WWE title. It's such a good video package. And I'm so glad it's still on the network. I was very concerned that because of licensing rights, it might not be on here. Because I know they do that with some of the songs. But I was so glad it was still on here. I was so, so glad. Because I love this video package. It's really, really good. Highly recommend watching it. You don't even necessarily have to see the match. Just see this video package for The Miz. Um, John Cena comes out, and he has a little choir singing his song a little bit. He has DMX leading a prayer, which is odd. Um, so yeah, we kind of have Nas versus DMX in the main event. I'm okay with that. My, my the 1996-year-old Mike loves this. Uh, but yeah, uh, Miz and Cena, the match is a little weird. Um, I'm not sure what happens to Cena mid-match, but he seems kind of out of it. Like, even the announcers are talking about it. I don't know if he got hit. I don't know if he got, like, maybe a little, a little concussed or if that's part of the storyline. But, um... It's definitely a weird match. It gets even weirder because um, they fight to the floor and Cena takes uh, Miz over the barricade to the cement. And poor Miz smashes his head on the concrete. Like, you can tell he's out. He's out of it. Um, he looked like Brock Lesnar did after he missed the shooting star. It's it's unfortunate, but I mean, this is part of the angle, so he has a little bit of time to recover, but um, it causes a double count out, and 
And this prompts The Rock to come out. The Rock, you know, he's about to announce something. Then we get an anonymous an email. We get an anonymous email from the Raw GM. And The Rock says it doesn't matter what you think. Tosses the laptop to the ground. And says he's restarting the match with no DQ, no count out. All that. So, um... Miz gets back in the ring. Cena gets back in the ring. And Rock hasn't left yet. The Rock turns around and Rock bottoms Cena. Miz covers him and beats John Cena. Now, it's sad because you can tell Miz is still out of it. He like he knows what he's supposed to do, but he you can tell he's not there. And I feel so bad for Miz at this point because this should be like the biggest moment of his career. And he doesn't even remember it to this day. Like, he's done interviews where he doesn't remember it. And that's unfortunate. Because the match is actually pretty good. Like, there's a lot of cool interference spots with Alex Riley. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in this match. Once it, once it picks up before the double countout, it's really a lot of fun. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of, a, kind of a lackluster ending. Then Brock comes out and gives the people's elbow to Miz. He was probably going to give him a rock bottom, but I think so, I think someone told him, He's not gloopy. Don't give him a rock bottom. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's your WrestleMania. Um, next year, we are in Miami, which uh, I wonder who's going to wrestle at that one. It's The Rock. But uh, this is this is still another WrestleMania where John Cena's in a title match, you guys. He's never... And actually, this... Even though there's only two title matches, this is historical because this WrestleMania is the only WrestleMania that's ever happened where there are no title changes. Yeah, pretty pretty weird. Grand, two title matches. But still, no titles changed hands. So good for this WrestleMania, I guess. I, I really enjoyed this WrestleMania. If you skip over the Michael Cole, Jerry Lawler stuff, this is a really solid WrestleMania. Like, if you take that 13 minutes, 45 seconds, and the bullshit before and after, and give that to the eight-man tag, give a little bit more of that to Cody and Ray, give a little bit more of that to the mixed tag, this could be one of the best manias of all time. I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it could be. It's a really, really good one. Um, I really enjoyed it a lot. But yeah, uh, so we will see you guys in Miami for The Rock versus John Cena. Once in a lifetime, not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you guys have any thoughts or comments about WrestleMania 27, feel free to hit me up at Mad Mike 483 on the Twitter machine. Hit us up on the YouTube comments here. Hit me up on Facebook on uh, on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Hit up the hashtag MM, and um, we'll catch you in Miami for WrestleMania 28. Thanks for coming back, and we'll see you on 32 Manias.